Hey, Sam from 3D here. Welcome back to our final video in our Blender for Beginners series. Exciting! In this video we are gonna be going through all of the things we have learned in the previous videos, which include movement, adding objects, materials, camera, rendering, and much more. And using all of them we are going to create a beautiful scene together which we will color and render out into a very nice looking image. In all of this, you might be wondering that in our videos so far we have not covered how to model objects in a Blender or how to create your models. And there is a reason for that. I truly feel like basics are everything and in our tutorial series, we have gone through all the basics of Blender by using which you can make some pretty looking scenes modeling is a whole other topic that can't be covered in one video. I think if you have the basics of Blender down with the shapes and settings Blender already provides, you can have a very strong base to start learning modeling as well afterwards. So for this very reason, we won't be touching on modeling in this video as well. But you might wonder how we are going to create the scene I just showed you. Don't worry because for this video we have provided you with some amazing 3D assets already modeled from the vast library at 3D.design. If you are looking to effortlessly create stunning artwork and save valuable time, we have got a treasure trove of ready to use assets waiting for you on our website 3D.design. Let the creative journey begin. This is how you will be receiving the file. As you can see, all the assets are going to be available to you. All we need to do is we are going to move them around, give materials to them and set up our lighting and it will turn out to be a beautiful render. To begin, let's go into the middle of the screen. Let's just ignore all these assets down there. First, what we need to do is add a plane. How do we add a plane? Shift and then we go to meshes and the plane. I will scale this up, I will press S and I will press 5 to scale it up by 5 times. I think this is a little bit less, according to our floor right here. So what I'm going to do is press S, press 2 and increase it that much and there we go. Our plane is sufficiently sized. Firstly what we need to do is we are going to bring in the walls. So this is the mesh that is our structure of the room. So this is what we are going to be moving to the center first. A quick little tip if you want to move objects in Blender quickly is, if you press Shift S, you will see this wheel menu right here and there are many options in it. But let's look at this option right here, selection to cursor. If I click this option, what will happen is whatever object that we have selected right, will be moved automatically toward the cursor. So let's just press Shift S. As you can see, our walls did move at the center of the cursor, but it's halfway into the ground. That's because whenever you do a selection to the cursor, it puts the origin point of the object into the middle of the cursor. And that's how the object is moved, according to its origin point. So all we need to do is press G and C to move it on the Z axis and adjust it. Right here, when you're moving the objects and adjusting them, as you can see, if I just move the mouse like this, the adjustments are very fast and have a bigger increment. So if you need to move an object just slightly, what you need to do is press shift hold it and then move your mouse. And as you can see, our object will move much more slowly. If I remove the shift, our object is faster. But if I hold shift, our object is slower. So I'll just line it up to the ground. And then by pressing shift, I'm just going to line it up like this. There we go. I am just going to rotate it. We will be using the R key to rotate. Then we will be pressing Z so our object gets locked out on the Z axis and only moves on the Z axis. Then we will press 9 and 0 on our keyboard to rotate it 90 degrees. Once it is rotated, let's bring in some other objects. This is going to be a Japanese style home. So this is a round window that we are going to be putting in this round area. It's basically like a puzzle piece that you have to put together. The sofa and the TV and stuff you can arrange however you want. But some of the things here you have to put in the right position. So what we are going to do is we are going to click this mirror right here and we are going to press shift S and click selection to cursor and there we go. Our mirror is in the middle right. But of course we don't want it like that we are going to go in the X axis view from up here. Press G to move, Z to lock it on the Z axis and line it properly. G and Y to lock it to the Y axis and there we go. To put it in its right place we will press G and X to move it on the X axis. And then we will put it right here. We are going to put the ground in its place. To bring the ground to the center area, what we will do is press shift and S and select the cursor. And there we go. Our origin point is all messed up, so our ground is spawning way below. One way to fix this origin point, so it's in the center of the mesh, is to go up here on an object and set the origin and origin to geometry. What this option will do, it will position the origin point exactly in the middle of your mesh. So no matter what mesh it is, let's say it's this carpet right here. If I go here, object, set origin, and origin to geometry, our origin point is going to be set exactly on the center of the mesh. Like that. Then we have our origin point centered if we press shift and S and select the cursor, there we go. Our object is not that down below, 
but it's still below because our cursor is below this floor right here. We are going to press G and C and move it up and there we go. This is quite interesting. We need to move it on the Y and X axis, but not on the Z axis. We can either press G and move it on the X axis first by pressing that or then press G and Y and then move it on the Y axis like that, but there is a better way to do it. First, we are going to press R and Z and rotate the floor 90 degrees so it fits properly. To move it on the Y and X axis at the same time without moving it on the Z axis, what we are going to do is press G shift and C. G, shift, hold, Z that means that except for the Z axis, we can move the object on any other axis. So I will be moving it slowly and aligning it up properly with our floor right here. Once I have done that, there we go, our floor is also nicely set. Let's bring this ceiling lining over here into the middle as well. For that, what we are going to do is, I'm going to set the origin to geometry, but I'm not going to press shift as this time and select cursor. I'll be moving this manually. So G and Y move it on the Y axis and then move it slowly towards the Y axis. As you can see, we need to rotate it to fit our mesh properly. What we will do is press R and C and we will rotate it 90 degrees. And then we need to move it on X and Y axis at the same time. So we will press G, Shift and C to lock the Z axis and move the object only on X and Y axis. Once we have done that, I am going to align it right here. It's going to be at the edge of our ceiling. So once we have it aligned right here, I'm going to press G and C to move it down. And there we go. That's nicely done as well and by these commands you can pretty much pick any object and move it by pressing G, rotate it by pressing R and scale it by pressing S. So what I want you to do is pause this video, open this file that we have given you in the description and put it one by one into the scene and place it however you like. I am going to click this sofa right here. Then I am going to move it by G and Y I am going to move it here. You can either scale it to make it big. You can rotate it if you want it to be facing this way. You can slightly tilt it if that's how you want it. But I want you to play around with all of these objects and try to set them up in this little room right here that we are building. So in the objects we have books, we have the coffee machine that can go in this area right here, which is the cabinets. But yeah, just play around with it and try to set everything up. Hey, I'm back with some off camera action. And as you can see, I have my scene all set up. I'm going to just give you a look at it. Because if you want to copy it, you can just take a look at this and configure your whole scene just like this. And then, once you have it done, we'll be moving on to materials. So for materials, remember what I showed you. What we need to do is go into this tab right here, which is the material preview tab. Once you go into the material tab, you can see everything becomes white. Except these little light books and this coffee machine and some little stuff right here, which we have left colored and already like put materials on them because if we didn't it will be a big project so to begin I am going to start with our ground. Right here to add a material to your objects what you need to do is go down here into the material tab once you click it. You need to select which object you want to give the material to and then press new. I am just going to name this material to floor and I am just going to give it a dark deep grey type of color and I am going to increase the roughness just a bit because we are trying to imitate wood. And as you guys know wood is not that reflective so I am going to increase the roughness which controls the reflectiveness of our object. So I'm going to put it to 0, 7 and I'm just going to decrease this greenness a bit more. And yeah, there we go. Let's color this part of our sofa. We will be doing the same thing. We will click the object we want to give the material to. We will click new. And be sure to name your materials always, because if you don't name your materials, while you are working on your blender projects, the materials tend to get a lot and it's really hard to figure out which material is which. So be sure to name your material so you don't have to worry about it later on and know exactly what material goes where. So once we name it wood, what we are going to do is go into the color tab and give it that name. Dark brown wood color. There we go. And I am going to increase the roughness to 0. 8 for this one. And that's gonna be it for our wood material. So since we are going for a certain style, many objects in the scene are going to require the wood texture. Those are these over here, this shelf, these little rods and stuff over here, this behind the TV wall is also going to have the same texture as this. So we can just go and click on each one of them, give a new material. What we can do is click the object we want to give the same material to, this wood material. I am going to choose this thing. We can click this menu right here, which is the browse material menu. Once we click it, all of the materials that are in the scene are going to be shown to us. As you can see, the book materials which I have given to the books are already showing as well. So I am going to search in this search bar, WOD, and there we go. We have the wood texture we just made. And if I click it, as you can see, this little wall right here has the same wood material as well. That's why I told you to name your materials so you can easily find them when needed. But as I just showed you, many other things are going to have the same wood material. 
I have an even better solution for you if you want to give the same material to multiple objects. But we are going to select all of the objects that are going to have the same material. So for me, it's going to be this arch right here, this tool, this cabinet, these shelves, this cabinet, these rods and everything that is going to be made of wood. I am going to select. And once I have all of these selected, I am. Just going to press G to move them to see if I have everything I want selected. And as I can see, I don't have this selected right here. Once we have all of the objects that are going to have the same wood material selected. What we are going to do is select an object that already has the wood material applied to it. So for us, we already gained this sofa the wood material that we want to give to all of these other objects. So once I have all of the objects selected, what I'm going to do is press shift and just click on this sofa once. As you can see, everything is highlighted blue while this sofa is highlighted green for you. The colors might be different, but be sure that the sofa is different colored. Once you have everything selected and your sofa selected as well, you need to press Ctrl L and it will open the link transfer data menu. Don't get confused by all of these options. What you need to just press is link materials. And once you press it, and if I go into the material tab, there you go, all of the objects have gotten the wood material automatically without me having to go to each one, browsing the material and setting it up manually. But we have a problem. See this thing right here, we are trying to make it look like this is a window, but right we came with the wood texture. What we want is to have the wood texture only on the borders of this and on the inside to make it look like light is coming through. How we can do that? We are going to put an emission material on it. So I hope you remember how to put multiple materials on the same object. What we are going to do is select this object. We are going to click this plus icon right here. And it's going to add another material slot. I am going to click new and as you will see, we will have two materials. I am going to name this material window light. Let me just go to the material preview tab. I am going to go into this emission drop down right here and change this color to a slight yellow. And I am going to increase the strength to about 10 or let's do 15. But nothing is changing. To give an object different materials on different faces. What we need to do is go into edit mode. Which you do from this drop down up here, edit mode. We need to go to this face, select mode. And then we are going to press this inner face that we want to give the window light material to. Once it's highlighted, we are going to choose the window light material from on the side here and click assign. And if you go back to the object mode and there we go. The same object has two different materials applied to it. What I want to do is in these little squares right here, I want to have a glass material so it isn't all wood. We are going to click plus, new, I am going to name this material glass and to give the material a glass like effect. What we want to do is go into the transmission, increase the transmission value completely and decrease the roughness value completely as well. But nothing is changing. Let's go into edit mode while the object is selected. Go into the face select menu and then select each of these faces while holding shift so they all get selected at the same time. Once we have all of these faces selected, let's choose the glass material from our side right here and click assign. And if we go back into the object mode, our glass material is assigned as well. I am going to be doing the same thing and give a material to this LCD right here. And this LCD shelf right here as well. But I am not going to show you how I'm going to do it because I want you to give materials to these objects yourself and practice doing it. So I'll be back just in a second and I'm back. And I have given color to the cabinet. And the TV as well for the TV. I used three materials for the plastic body. A glossy screen for which I have the roughness cranked down to the lowest. And then at the back of the TV, I gave it the same window light effect that I gave to this window right here to give it a backlit. Nice lighting. If you were just asking how I sold out the object, you can do the same thing by pressing the backslash key on your keyboard. Your object that you have selected will get soloed out and you can work on it without any interruptions if you have it all set up already. Press backslash and everything will come back. We have all the materials set up except one, which is this painting on the wall right here. So what we are going to do is we are going to click new to add a new material to it. We are going to name it picture frame and then we are going to drag this up I get this menu by going into this drop down right here and clicking shader editor. Once we have this menu we are going to press principle BSDF and click on it once then we are going to press control and T and we will get these notes right here. To add the image texture, all you need to do is press open, navigate to the folder in which you have the picture saved, click on the picture and click the open image. If you go into the material preview tab, look at that, there is a picture on the wall right here. So there we go, we have all of our pretty looking scenes set up. But if we go into the rendered view, that does not look appealing or good, right? So let's fix that. First, we need to set up our camera. Because a camera is an essential part if you want to render your images in high quality. So to add a camera, we will press shift to go 
and select this camera right here. And I want to add the camera to this view right here, which I am exactly looking at. What you need to do if you want to set up the camera exactly in the position you are looking at is press CTRL, Alt, and zero on your numpad. And there we go, my camera is all set up. But there is a problem. I don't want my camera to be in this 1920 by 1080 ratio. To fix this, what I need to do is go into this Output Properties tab right here. And there I will see an option for the resolution. I am going to set it up to 1080 by 1080. There we go, my resolution is 1080 by 1080. I am going to press G while the camera is selected up here to move it. Then I am going to press Shift and C to lock it on the Z axis. And then I am just going to move it slightly farther away so all of my area shows up in the camera. Then I am going to press G and C and I am going to move it up. So the whole screen is centered properly. Then I'm going to press R and move it on the X axis right here like this. Our camera is properly set up. I am just going to click this plane right here and increase the size of it. So we don't see this like space right here. I'm going to just increase the size of my plane to a lot. And there we go, our camera is all set up. If we go into the rendered view, it's the same thing. Can you guess what the problem is? If you guess lighting, go ahead and pat yourself on the back because you were exactly right. We still haven't lit up this scene properly yet, so we need to do that. To add lighting to your scene, what you need to do is press Shift A, go into the lighting menu, and I'm going to choose the area light for my main room right here. But the area light is below right. I'm going to press G and C to move it up. G and Shift Z to move it on the X and Y axis. I'm going to move it up even more. Once I have it all set up, I am going to go into the light data tab right here. Go into the rendered view and our camera view. I am going to slightly give it a warmer color. Like this and I'm going to increase its value just a bit. I don't like the color so I'm going to give it more of an orange. Color right here and I'll put this value to 25. What I'm going to do is I'm going to press Shift D to duplicate this light and I'm going to move it to the side. I'm going to press R and Y to rotate this light and position it to the side of our room so we can light it up from the side right here. I'm going to go into my camera view. I'm going to go into the rendered view and I'm going to increase this value to about 100. Rotate it just a bit and there we go. I'm going to press Shift D and duplicate the light, lock it on the Z axis and move it to the side over here. Rotate it so it's facing our room. But for this light, I am going to decrease it down to around 50-ish. Let's see how everything is looking right. Also for you, the view might be like this, but if you remember, I told you how you can isolate the camera view. By pressing Ctrl B and just dragging over your camera view so you only see what is in the camera view. And you don't need to see all the other stuff that is outside your camera. Once more, I am going to press Shift D, duplicate this slide, and I am going to press C to move it up. And I am going to light the scene from up above and slightly tilt it by using R, and moving it around here. I am going to decrease its value to around 30. Also, I am going to increase the size of this light and maybe even increase the value of it as well. Let's do 100 for this one as well. After we have all of these lights set up, I just click all of these lights and make little adjustments to them, to their colors, to their intensities, until I like the result that we are getting. Fine, so I think this result that we have right is the one I like. So once we have our camera and all the lights and all the materials set up, and our scene is looking good, it's finally time to render. To render your image, what you need to do is go to the Render tab. We are going to be using cycles to render this. In the Sampling tab, we are going to be focusing on the rendered samples. I am going to uncheck the Noise Threshold option, and in the Samples, I am going to put it to 512. I am going to check the Denoise option. If you have an NVI DIA graphics card, you can use the Optics Denoiser. I am going to use that. If you don't, then the Open Image Denoiser should work fine. Also, if you are using a GPU, you can choose this option from this device drop down right here to use your GPU for rendering, which should be a little bit faster than your CPU. Once you have the render sample set, and you have the denoise option checked as well, you need to go into this menu right here, up top, which says render, and then click on render image, and your image should start rendering. It will take a varying amount of time according to the PC you have. It might be faster or it might even take long for you. But don't worry about it. It's just that 3D rendering takes a while sometimes. And for me, it only took 15 seconds or 16 seconds to render and we have the image right here. Once we have the image all done and it is finished rendering, you will know that it's finished rendering when the time here isn't going up. Once you have it all rendered, don't close the window instantly. What I need you to do is go into image right here. Click save as and choose a desired location where you want to save the picture name it I am going to name it living room. Once I have it named I am going to press save as image I am going to keep the file format at PNG and I am going to choose RGB instead of RGBA because we don't have any transparency in our video and I am going to click save as image 
and if I navigate to the folder and open that image, there we go. We have a beautifully rendered, high quality image of our scene, all completed. If you followed all of our beginner tutorials and have reached this point, and even completed the final project, congratulations! You should be proud of yourself because you did a really good job. I am very proud of you. I hope you have learned a lot from this series and have the basic knowledge about Blender, which will enable you to create your own scenes and open up the world of 3D to you. Don't forget to check out our vast library of 3D character models at 3D.design. I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.